WWE is bringing the Royal Rumble to the Tampa Bay area next January. It was announced today that Royal Rumble 2024 will take place from Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida on Saturday, January 27th. Tropicana Fields was previously one of the homes of the WWE Thunderdome during the pandemic era. Tropicana Field hosted the 2021 Royal Rumble, but it was in the Thunderdome and there was no fans in attendance. And a new era for WWE is officially here. For the first time in more than four decades, Vince McMahon is not the majority owner of WWE. A press release was issued on Tuesday announcing that Endeavor and WWE have completed their deal to create TKO Group Holdings, a merged company with WWE and the UFC. Endeavor holds a controlling interest of 51% in the new company, with WWE shareholders holding a 49% interest. Both WWE and the UFC will continue to operate independently despite now being part of the same company. Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel will serve as the CEO of TKO Group Holdings. Vince McMahon, whose title is executive chairman of the company, will run the pro wrestling side of the business. Dana White is the CEO of the UFC. Endeavor executives Ari Emanuel and Mark Shapiro have given an update on WWE's talks for a new media rights deal. WWE media's rights deals for Raw and SmackDown will be up in October 2024. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Shapiro said that they're having very encouraging conversations with several players and platforms regarding new rights deals. Emanuel added that they feel very good about where they're at with the negotiations. During New York Fashion Week, Recently, Emmanuel and Paul Triple H Levesque were spotted sitting next to Amazon's Jeff Bezos. Amazon has been rumored as a potential landing spot for SmackDown. Representatives from Endeavor, WWE, and UFC were at the New York Stock Exchange yesterday morning to ring the opening bell. On social media, Triple H wrote that this is the most exciting time that he's ever been a part of in the industry. Also, the WWE Endeavor deal could potentially offer crossover opportunities to some UFC fighters. Nick Khan told ESPN that the merger could offer some fighters the ability to extend their careers with TKO. Nick Khan said fighters with big personalities could potentially cross over from UFC to WWE. UFC Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer Lawrence Epstein also spoke to ESPN about the merger, saying, Where we want to get is where every UFC fan is a WWE fan and every WWE fan is a UFC fan. ESPN wrote that there are no plans for WWE or UFC to undergo massive changes. In a discussion with Bill Simmons taped prior to the official launch of TKO, WWE President Nick Khan gave some hints into how the new company could bolster both WWE and UFC in the near future. One of the more interesting hints is the potential of both brands running at different times on the same day, one running internationally earlier in the day with the other running later at night, for example, to create a full day day experience for viewers. He expects both groups to discuss future dates so that the two don't work against each other for major events. He also said that they are having hyper-focused conversations about something like a schedule release day or an event like the NFL Draft that could work in a similar way for both companies in terms of fan buzz. Some other notes from the Simmons podcast, Nick Khan said Vince McMahon is progressing quite well and to assume he is rehabbing from his major back surgery faster than he should be. McMahon was present Tuesday at launch at TKO at the New York Stock Exchange. Asked again about Stephanie McMahon leaving the company, Nick Khan reiterated his previous statements about how he would have loved to have her still with the company, but that it was her decision to leave when Vince McMahon returned. Saying, I respect the decision, I wish she hadn't done that, and she knows that from me personally. She's a terrific executive and a terrific person. That's her decision. Her relationship with Vince is theirs, and once she's made it, I have total respect for the decision. WWE executives have received a bonus as a result of the closing. That included Nick Khan with $15 million, Kevin Dunn with $7 million, Paul Levesque $5 million, and Frank Riddick $5 million. And speaking of Frank Riddick, WWE President Nick Khan sent an email to employees on Wednesday announcing that Frank Riddick will be leaving WWE at the end of September. Riddick had been WWE's chief financial officer 
since 2021. In his role, Riddick oversaw WWE's financial planning and analysis strategy, controllership, investor relations, tax, data analytics, technology, event travel, and facility departments. Also, while speaking with ESPN about the WWE Endeavor deal, Nick Khan was asked if WWE would be interested in CM Punk making a return to the company. Khan didn't offer much of an answer either way, saying that they have respect for CM Punk and wish him nothing but the best. Saying, listen, we only have respect for Phil. We appreciate his run here. We appreciate what he did and tried to do with the UFC. Not many people can actually get in there and do what he did. So when we have respect for Phil, we wish him nothing but the best. Punk's AEW contract was terminated with cause following a physical backstage incident that took place at All In. His termination was announced on September 2nd after an internal investigation into the incident. On to some NXT notes. Becky Lynch is the new NXT Women's Champion. Tuesday's show ended with Becky Lynch holding the NXT Women's Championship, a title she previously never held. The finish of the match had Tiffany Stratton go for the prettiest moonsault ever. However, Becky Lynch escaped. Tiffany Stratton then walked right right into the manhandle slam by Becky, pinning Tiffany to earn her first NXT Women's Championship. The Women's Breakout Tournament is returning soon. NXT teased on Tuesday the return of the tournament without giving a date. The last time the tournament was held was back in summer of 2022. Ilya Dragunov will challenge Carmelo Hayes once again. Dragunov defeated Wesley to open Tuesday's NXT in a match that determined the new number one contender for the NXT Championship. The finish came when Ilya Dragunov pinned Wes Lee after he connected with an elbow to the back of the head. This will be the second title match between the two, with Hayes managing to score the win at the Great American Bash back on July 30th. After his loss, Wesley was shown exiting the WWE Performance Center, saying, I'm done. Braun Breaker will also meet Baron Corbin after the two had an exchange on NXT. Corbin called out Breaker to congratulate him on what he did to Von Wagner the week prior, smashing the steel steps onto his head. Breaker told Corbin that he didn't do it for his approval. The two got confrontational before Corbin slapped Breaker and eventually both had to be pulled apart by security. In other news, when asked on Instagram regarding her in-ring future, Mandy Rose wrote, Funny you asked, your girl may or may not be a free agent soon. Also, Nia Jax has made her return to WWE. Nia Jax appeared at the end of Monday Night's Raw, jumping Raquel Rodriguez during the main event between Rodriguez and Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship. After the match, Nia Jax attacked Rhea Ripley as well. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest, catching you up on everything pro wrestling. I will be back with another episode soon. In the meantime, do not forget to subscribe to F4W online.